because we had that definition already in the course of the day. And I prefer to refer to the definition the WHO has established in a paper in 2009, which is the following. It's a medicine, a medicinal pro product prepared in accordance with a homeopathic manufacturing procedure as described in a pharmacopoeia in official use or other officially recognized documents. And the, uh, the definition goes on to say that a homeopathic medicinal product may contain a number of homeopathic preparations. There are very similar definitions in the European Union with 28 member states. Also in the newly founded Eurasian Economic Union, there is this definition. The um, Eurasian Economic Union does include Russia, and Kazakhstan, and other important countries. This sim a very similar decision is also available in various other countries. I mentioned some of them on the slides. The WHO document itself classifies this um, definition as the commonly used within the homeopathic community. This most commonly used definition classifies homeopathic medicinal products as medicinal products. That's important. Not cosmetics, not food supplements, not medical devices, medicinal products. It, the definition clearly includes homeopathic combination medicinal products. It does not exclude any dosage forms. Um, we had um, a short um, address to the Indian definition there. Um, the injectables are included. That's not the case in the European definitions and not in the WHO definition. The definition is solely manufacturing related and not limited to specific forms of homeotherapy. It allows diversity. It is not limited to clinical homeopathy, not limited to classical homeopathy. The definition allows diversity. The assessment is about this definition. In, according to my knowledge, and I'm a lawyer, it has hardly caused legal disputes. And from the legal um, perspective, it is considered as helpful, well-phrased, and clear. So I would say the WHO definition may serve as a good model for national legislation. Of course, there is need, what we have discussed in the morning, to harmonize the work on pharmacopoeias to get a common agreement to what, to what pharmacopoeias can be referred to. But that's another um, topic which was addressed in the morning already. Most legislation require for medicinal products including homeopathic ones, because homeopathic products are also medicinal products, and not food supplements, and not cosmetic, an authorization procedure before the products can be placed on the market. That's clearly stated in the European Directive by saying, no medicinal product may be placed on the, on, on the market of a member state unless a marketing authorization has been issued. Th that applies um, for all medicinal products which are either prepared industrially or manufactured by a method involving an industrial process. Homeopathic medicinal products are also subject to similar authorization requirements in various other legislations, including the newly formed Eurasian Economic Union, including other countries. Um, my assessment is if we all agree, and I believe we should, that homeopathic products should be classified as medicinal products, it follows that legislators may have the liberty to make this, project, this product subject to an authorization procedure. I'm not saying if a legislator is taking another solution that this is inappropriate, but I can understand legislators requiring industrially manufacturing products to be authorized before they are placed on the market. Why? Because the purpose of the authorization procedure is to allow a prior assessment by the competent authority of quality, safety, and if the product has an indication related efficacy. And this purpose applies to all medicinal products, including the homeopathic ones. And for formally, 
independently whether they are manufactured or distributed in high amounts or in low amounts. It is, from my perspective, because medicinal products are medicinal products, also appropriate that legislators require applicants to use commonly used dossier formats. They require for us a medicinal product, which is in the European Union quite common, the CTD format, which is also written down in the European legislation as the format to be used. But content-wise, the conditions for a marketing authorization and the requested documentation in the applications should take the particular characteristics of homeopathic medicinal products into account. We've heard that quite often this morning and this afternoon that um, not all standards which are usual in analysis of drugs of medicinal products fit to homeopathic medicinal products. So content-wise, the conditions for authorizations and registrations need to take these um, specific situations into account. And for all the 28 member states, the European legislation clearly recognized that homeopathic medicinal products do indeed have particular character characteristics. And you can read that in the preamble of the European Directive. There you can find the expressions like particular characteristics and also particular rules for the evaluation. And I think we have seen that quite well in the, um, or, or really well in the presentations this morning, how it's done in the, um, in the important states, um, Germany, France, and Switzerland. There is a sophisticated approach um, to um, do that um, evaluation. In the legislation, um, the specific characteristics is addressed as follows. In many legislation, a simplified registration is foreseen for homeopathic medicinal products without therapeutic indications. We have already heard that this is the case in the European Union, but it's also the case, for example, in the newly formed Eurasian Union, it's the case in Canada, it's the case in Switzerland, as we have seen. And this procedure is, for example, also available in the Ukraine. And in many legislations, marketing authorizations for homeopathic medicinal products with therapeutic indications derived from bibliographic data are also foreseen. That's the second pillar. For example, in several EU member states, in the Eurasian Union, in the Eurasian Union law, in Brazil, in Canada, in Chile, in Colombia, I think also in India, and of course in Switzerland. Um, but in these countries, usually the labeling rules require to identify first of all the products as homeopathic. The consumer needs to know what he buys, namely a homeopathic medicinal product, and therefore they need to be labeled accordingly. For authorized products, usually a hint in the indication shows um, when the indication is de derived from traditional use. We also have tackled this in the afternoon. Each year, typical wording could be, X is a homeopathic medicinal product with ingredients traditionally used in, in um, homeopathy in, and then the indications come, or the indications of X are derived from the homeopathic um, drug pictures and, in, and include, and then the indication to follow. These are typical, um, typical wording for indications derived from traditional use, namely bibliographic data. How do I assess these procedures, registrations and marketing authorizations procedures? From the legal perspective, I consider the simplified registration procedure as a very helpful procedure for market access and, from, and it ensures, ensures quality, safety, and appropriate information for patients. The existing national marketing authorization procedures, which allow making reference to bibliographic data, are generally a very helpful tool as well, and they also ensure quality, safety, 
efficacy and appropriate information for patients and medical doctors. But specific limitations need to be addressed and a more uniform application in the regulatory practice within existing legislations would be of help. And there I would like to make reference to what Irene has said. She um, addressed many points where the regulatory practice causes um, some delays and um, difficulties, and this needs to be addressed in the discussions. Um, and there is also a major um, issue about these procedures. There are legislations of many countries where you either have neither the simplified registration procedure nor the bibliographic marketing authorization procedure or where you have only the simplified registration procedures. And in these countries, homeopathic medicinal products, industrially manufacturers, cannot be made available to patients. When I think about a country where I see these difficulties, um, I think it's hard for the industry to make medicinal products available, for example, in Argentina. So these are the existing um, systems, and I will shortly come to an end. These are the common two pillars, simplified registration, bibliographic marketing authorizations, but, and we have also tackled this point this afternoon, marketing authorizations and registrations for homeopathic medicinal products are often attacked because they are not based on results of clinical trials. There is a lot of criticism and to a, to a specific extent, we have to live with this criticism as being part of um, homeopathic um, providers. And, but I believe that the criticism is not fully appropriate because, first of all, homeopathic substances and combinations have demonstrated their value in the long-term therapeutic use. And also, when, when um, critics simply cry to perform a lot of um, various clinical trials to the highest standard. Um, um, what we have to see that the specific characteristics of homeopathic medicinal product does not always allow to apply all the conventional methods for clinical trial. For example, it would not be appropriate to ask the generation of pharmacokinetic or pharmacodynamic data for studies performed with clinical trials. Um, but there are clinical trials and clinical evidence can be made available. And if clinical evidence can be made available showing that the product works in its indication, it should be allowed to submit such evidence. The question is, of course, how is there a procedure? It does, not, it does in my perspective, not fall under pillar one, simplified registration, not under pillar two, bibliographic marketing authorization, but when you look into the EU law, and there are similar provisions in other law, there is the possibility to apply for so-called mixed marketing authorizations. How does that work? The definition is in the European Directive. It says that a mixed marketing authorization application <coughs> shall mean marketing authorization application dossiers where Module 4 and Module 5 consists of a combination of reports of limited non-clinical and or clinical studies carried out by the applicant and of bibliographic reference. So it's a combination of limited clinical studies with bibliographic references. And accordingly, authorized homeopathic medicinal products they are still homeopathic medicinal products, so they also need to be identified as homeopathic in their labels. But stronger indication claim may be possible if the indication is based on clinical trial results. I would like to give you an example. A traditional use authorization would be a claim um, X is a homeopathic medicinal product with ingredients traditionally used in homeopathy, in homeopathy, in symptoms associated with disorders of the locomotor apparatus. This 
indication could change in X is a homeopathic medicinal product used in disorders of the locomotor apparatus. And the reference to the generated evidence could be made in the summary of product characteristics. How would I like to conclude? Applicants and authorities are encouraged to make use and apply this procedure as well, but in addition to the other procedures. The other procedures are very valuable and we need them definitely and therefore I would summarize my results as follows. First of all, it's important to have a definition of homeopathic medicinal products and a common consensus where we are quite advanced. Then, in many legislation, we have the possibility of simplified registrations. In many legislation, we have also the possibility of bibliographic marketing authorizations. And if we could, in the future, for some products, um, also add a third pillar for mixed marketing authorization, that would be a contribution to access for patients to our homeopathic medicinal products. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for a very concise and clear overview of a quite a complex subject matter. And the mixed, uh, the mixed message, the mixed marketing authorization message is, I think, very interesting. Tomorrow there will be a forum discussion where that theme will definitely recur. Um, but uh, thank you very much. And um, so we're going to break for tea now. Um, and so, uh, but uh, can I ask everybody please to stick to the 15 minutes? And so definitely to have all of you back here at 16.35, please. But we have also troops in there that will usher you back in. But, uh, but please, uh, because we, want, we will overrun slightly in the program, but, uh, but we still have a lot of very interesting presentations. So um, looking forward to seeing you again soon. Uh, thank you, Dr. Haslin, for making that uh, 15 minutes thing very clear to the delegates. Another very small announcement, um, the delegates who are interested to take up the tour to Agra, one day tour or a customized tour on 25th or 26th, kindly contact our travel partners at the registration desk. They would be out there to help you and they can arrange, they can customize the tours for you and they can uh, include you in the group tour that is happening on 25th, which will be a one day tour. So kindly meet uh, our travel partners in the, on the registration desk. Thank you. We'll see you again at 20, oh, sorry, 1635, yeah.